Bonjour mes frères et mes sœurs. Listen to the stream. So this way. Um, no, what, what is it over here? This way. Look at it. It's so pretty. All the colors. Everyone is different. I mean, honestly. God is just so obviously calm all the time. Like, he's not in a hurry. He's still taking time to make about a billion of these tiny little seeds that are all the same, but subtly different. Trees take hundreds of years to grow. It's calm. It's calm. Speaking of God, um, free will, and like, how does his sovereignty play into our free will? And do we have free will? And what does it mean to surrender your will to God's will? As usual, I think confusion from this comes, well, one, we're human and imperfect, and we really we can't understand it with our limited minds currently, but also misunderstanding of God as this external force who is outside of nature and its natural causes, and who only, the only things that really God does that we can credit to his omnipotence are like the supernatural, coincidental, mysterious, inexplicable things. Almost as if to give something a natural cause and effect kind of cause is to take God out of it and to explain God away. Um, and that leads to us kind of looking for like signs whether we should do something. And if anything makes logical sense, that can't be God because he is faith and that doesn't make sense. And or um, things that like have to be kind of coincidental or feel miraculous or feel supernatural for us to credit them to God. And also um, a sense that to live by faith and to live surrender to God is to kind of be as passive as possible concerning your life and like almost do as little as possible or that like to take agency and to do like take control of your the things in your influence is almost like to intervene with God or to cheat or to not let him have his will because you have your plans and you are acting and that means that God can't work you like getting in his way um, God's spirit in the minds of the biblical authors was imminent I-M-M-A-N-E-N-T as in everywhere like the word for spirit is the same word as the breath of life that was seen thought to kind of sustain you which does um that sustains you and that's the same thing as is going through well you have your spirit he has his spirit and god's spirit is like it's the same as the wind jesus said the spirit is like the wind it's the um air that's moving you know all around us is seen as kind of god's spirit and then also that force that moves the stars in their ordered courses and basically just the idea is that God and his in his spirit is present in all of the natural forces those are his laws and that's his working and his life and his creative power evident all over in the world in like that grass that's growing up there and in the you know eggs and birds laying eggs and them hatching in the spring that's God's creative and life-giving power so that the things that you know now we would ascribe to science and natural cause and effect Yes, you know, it happens because of such and such scientific reason. Yes, it also happens because because God, like, he works through that. And then secondly, like I was talking about kind of in my, my um, video about how to distinguish between you and the Holy Spirit, God's goal is that we should be kind of part of him and our spirit should be one spirit with his and we should have the mind of Christ so that it's kind of a false dichotomy, like, well, did this come from him or from me? Am I doing this, or did God do this? Do I take the credit for this, or, like, do I give the credit to God? Um, at a certain point, the lines kind of break down because you're part of God. And I like to think of it as if your will is surrendered to God, not as much that you then cease to have a will and it's just an external force controlling you, but rather that your will and your desires and the, your purposes and things you're working towards are in line with the wider current of God's will toward remaking the creation and love and like helping people. 
and teaching people truth. Um, so, yeah, what, but what, like, what constitutes our free will versus God? How do we fit in? Obviously, God is unlimited in his power and everything. So, I think of it as kind of a circle. Obviously, God wouldn't have boundaries to the circle, but just for the sake of argument, God is this big circle in everything that he knows and is capable of in his nature. And then we are created beings, so we're the little like circles in the middle of God, flesh in his creation and everything. And we, you know, are, you're a designed being. So you have a certain nature, you have certain limitations, you have a certain design and like a certain purpose and just a way that you you naturally are by virtue of who you are so like for instance i have free will to um make this video and i have free will to stop it and get up and like go inside but i don't have free will to fly right now and i don't have free will to be able to just instantly cure cancer and i don't have free will to be able to do calculus right now because i don't know calculus I also don't have free will to simultaneously be here and be somewhere else at the same time. I can only do the one thing that I most want to do right now. So just because of the way that we're designed, there are certain like limits on our free will, so to speak. Or rather, our free will has like a certain shape. You know, we, we have a certain shape. We, yeah, there's, there's boundaries to it. And like, that's okay. That's just the way that humans are. Um, morally, those limits are, um, you're a, a rational spirit, a link to the book that kind of described this. It's, it's helpful for, um, I think, understanding what it means to be morally free of will. So you're a rational spirit, so yet you're free to like make moral choices, but your nature is designed so that you want God. God is what's really going to satisfy you to be in communication with, like, his life and plugged into his life. So we um, can be deceived right now because we don't know everything and we can be deceived into thinking that things are God's life that aren't or things will make us happy that won't. But in the end, all of us are really looking for God. All of us are really looking for what is good. And that is, like, the end of our natures. And so Jesus said, um, the truth will make you free. So, like... A truly free human being is somebody who knows the truth, who knows God, and who's always learning more about God, and who's plugged into, like, God and his life. And in that case, it's almost like you're no longer free to do certain things, or rather, you simply don't want to. Like, technically, yes, I could go, like, punch somebody in the face right now and insult them, but I know, I see plainly that like that's not gonna help anybody and I don't want to do it and I'm not gonna do it so yeah there's just kind of these I guess constraints on free will or a certain shape that your your will is supposed to be but say that you are like a Christian and um, walking in God's spirit the way that you're supposed to and in tune with his life and you know enough of the truth to be free now we we genuinely do have agency and have a free will over like our own lives over over certain things um like we're, we're allowed to choose among various options and make meaningful choices for the ways that we want our lives to go the way that god kind of explained this to me or that i was meditating on earlier this summer was the garden of eden there was the bad choice that you you didn't want to do but then also lots of genuinely good options. You know, you can eat from this tree or this tree or this tree, and you can't just look up at God and be like, okay, God, like, which tree should I eat from? He's going to be like, any, pick, you know? And he's fine with us picking as long as, you know, you keep in mind what are his principles of guidance. I think that there are legitimately multiple right choices, as it were, and... God made us with the ability to choose for ourselves, as it were. Um, he gave us each a sphere of authority or a, of like influence where like you're you can kind of make the kind of life that you want to have. And he's not always necessarily gonna tell you as 
um, going to tell you in like an external way, other than just through like your own desires, what exactly and precisely to do. And I'm talking on like a pretty small scale here, um, just like day to day, monthly, weekly kind of decisions. There's not necessarily going to be one divine plan for your life that if you stray from it even by one tiny decision, you've ruined your life. I think that's a, it's a misunderstanding of like time and of God's nature and our nature that causes us to think in that stressful way for like, oh my goodness, if I go the wrong way home today, I could mess up everything and like my life could be ruined. Um, I don't I don't believe that's a like a helpful kind of way to, to put it. It's kind of like God re if you're a Christian, you know, God remade you. He made your heart to love what him and love what's good and put his spirit in you to make you alive and able to see what's good and discern it better and better and so now you have this little sphere that can expand as you like get a family and ministry and stuff and um you kind of design that that's like your little garden and you can plant carrots or you can plant roses or you can plant whatever and they're all good good things you know you you have the choice now that you've been transformed to love what is good you can you can you have more liberty you have more freedom and that's a lot of, like, liberty in Christ. Paul talks about it a lot, too, because, um, you know, under the law and the way that we even tend to be and tend to want to be, that's almost easier is just to give up the control over things that we genuinely have influence over to somebody else or to God, however we might discern him by mysterious signs, like, from outside of us, to just have that th th there's this one right path for every tiny little thing, and, you know, you got to do that, and that it makes it easier if you have something else to tell you what to do but necessarily it's not always you know sometimes it's just like do you want vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream do you want to become do you want to you know work on writing a book or do you want to learn a new instrument do you want to like marry this person or that person i think it is i guess like controversial to take it so far to like big decisions like um career marriage etc but I believe sometimes it's helpful to see it from the perspective of God is arranging all things and will bring you to the life that he wants you to have. And sometimes it's helpful to see it from the perspective of God gives you meaningful choices to kind of choose and create the life that you want. Because where did those, those wants come from? Anyway, they came from him. So it's like all when you can't really draw the line what comes from God in the end, what comes from me in the end. Obviously, if your ideal life is... You know, something that's it's um, very ugly and very obviously not in line with God's design, then that's that's you're mis making mistakes. But other than that, there's lots of legitimate ways to live, you know, as a Christian. And yeah, um, uh, the 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 places I think where you know you should surrender to God and where it's helpful to think of it like, okay, God's God's got this. He's um, going to work all things for good, etc., is things that really aren't in our control. And that's, you know, where you have to you know, stop st striving vainly against things you can't control and then, you know, let God take care of that. But there's lots of things that are in our control. More, I think, more things than we tend to um, to think. Um, a kind of A kind of secular way to put this is that is... Do we have free will or is it all fate and determinism? And I like this one YouTube commenter said, kind of the mechanism of fate is free will. Or like whatever machinery you might think of as determining your like your cause and effect, fate or destiny. Your free will and the things going on in your brain and your heart and the free choices the choices that you make plays into all of that. You have a meaningful you have a meaningful effect on your own life. Or in Christian terms, God's will and his mind and his plans for you, um, your will and your mind and your plans for you are a part of that. They can be in line with the bigger picture, but that still means that you are making decisions and you're choosing between options and like that's, that's okay. Um, I like to think of it as more of, so some people have an idea, I think, of God's will as like a map um, in time where it's almost like the future exists as a thing and God has this very specific path that he wants you to go across and he's going to kind of steer you along that path almost against your will like steer you along that path 
to get you into that place where like okay you're in the center of his will you're like where you're supposed to be and it's okay um i think most of the time just for your like daily decision making and living in time it's more helpful to think of it kind of like a role playing game or like you're co-authoring with god or i think a role playing game is a good um a good metaphor for how it actually is because like god would be the kind of game master who sets the parameters um arranges the circumstance the other circumstances um there's other people arranging their own and kind of who are affecting you but you determine and he kind of sets the rules of the game but then you determine how you're going to play um within it and what kind of character you're going to be and what kind of skills you're going to pursue and how you're going to follow like it's an adventure and we have meaningful choices within it an obvious thing i think but also something that i truly i know i misunderstood for years and it was very confusing to me when god was very gently trying to explain to me that no i'm not you know um you 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 can pick whether you know you want to eat dessert tonight or whether you want to just like go watch a movie or something and it, it's it's up to you you know you can you can can choose now <laughs> so yeah <sighs> make make good choices there are there are lots of good choices and if you are t- always talking to god and praying and and um aware of him then if you're about to completely mess everything up he can he can step in and stop you and he knows you're going to be open to that so be fearless and, and confident and like go go do stuff yeah make make choices <laughs>